I'd like to start tonight's review by letting you know that the Imagine Dragons Believer will not be sung at any stage during this review, but maybe at the start of the next one. Good evening, it's Adam here again with another quick instant move review for you. So tonight I caught the latest film from director David Gordon Green. This is The Exorcist Believer. What is it? It tells the story of a bloke by the name of Victor who unfortunately a few years ago lost his wife during a horrific uh, earthquake that happens uh, whilst they're away on holidays in Haiti. Uh, and as a result, he loses his wife. She dies, um, but she has to make some terrible choices and chooses to save his unborn baby child by the name of Angela. Uh, Angela grows up with uh, with Victor and um, the two live a pretty happy life. Then one day Angela says, do you mind if I go and study with my best friend Catherine uh, after school? Sure, go for it. No problems at all. Go walking through the woods and try and conjure up memories of your dead mother. Mm, left that bit out, didn't you? crafty kids. Anyway, the two are found three days later in a barn, and let's just say they're a little bit changed, you think? Um, they just start looking different and saying weird stuff and having convulsions, and their legs, their legs are, like, not good, and their feet are not good, and their nails are not good. Th things are not good for these kids. So... They come to a realisation that they're possessed. And it's through uh, then the nurse that lives next door, played by Anne Dowd. Uh, she convinces uh, Victor that, yes, indeed, your daughter is possessed and you need to get a hold of um, this lady, Chris O'Neill, played by Ellen Burstyn. Yes, the person from the original is back uh, to come and sort it out. And she's lived through an exorcism, so she knows what's going on. She's written books, she's done all the things, so you're right to go, Jack. Bring her over, it'll all be peachy keen. But is it? No, it's not. Anyway, as I mentioned, this film is directed by David Gordon Green. Now, David Gordon Green is well known for uh, bringing back the uh, Halloween franchise, um, of course, with Jamie Lee Curtis. And you know, to, to interesting effect, I suppose, to a point, uh, I thought the first film that he did in that franchise was very good. Um, the other ones, mm. Anyway, um, he's back again with um, Scott Teens and Danny McBride. Yes, the bloke who wrote Your Highness and was in Hot Rod and was in Tropic Thunder is, is also on the writing team of this. So this is actually the sixth uh, Exorcist film um, and it basically plays as a kind of a direct sequel to the film from 50 years ago, The Exorcist, directed by William Freakin. Now... Famously, William Freakin said before he passed away, I and he was talking to a reviewer or someone, he said, oh, I hear that that bloke David Gordon Green, uh, the bloke who made Pineapple Express, is, has now got the rights and is going to start remaking my Exorcist films. Um, I hope I never see the day where that happens. Well, unfortunately, William Freakin might have just jinxed himself because he actually passed away before this film came out. And as I mentioned, this is the sixth instalment of the Exorcist franchise since the first one 50 years ago. I feel the other ones have been in very much varying qualities, none of them overly good, to be honest. Um, and since we've had the original Exorcist, there has been lots of different exorcism styles of films. So we're used to kind of seeing demonic possession, really getting a hold of someone who was maybe quite nice once upon a time. I'm looking at you, Evil Dead Rise. Anyway... Um, this film is kind of a film of three parts. Um, it's a missing persons case. It's a film uh, about race. It's a film about um, restored faith. And it's also an exorcist film. you got a lot there. 
lots of different things going on. And that, I think, is the big problem with this film, is that the script doesn't really know where it wants to go. The direction by David Gordon Green is pretty competent. Um, he, do, he is a pretty good director. I don't really have any problems with the way that he places his camera. Um, a few really weird little decisions um, about sort of the flashes. Now, the flashes of, of the demon in the original film was probably one of those things that people used to stop frame it, you know, on their VHS to see if they can see the possession face in the uh, in, in the film um, this one the possessed face is kind of there but it, it doesn't actually play very much into um, seeing that face again or it playing a big role in what we're actually looking at and some of the dialogue is so woeful um, I just could not get on board with some of the dialogue in this film. It was v just very disappointing. Um, Leslie and Juna does a competent job, I would say, in the lead role. Anne Dowd did not need to be in there. Well, I thought she was actually bad, Anne Dowd, I should say. She did need to be in this film because she's probably an integral character. Ellen Burstyn is 100% there for the paycheck, and she even said that. So you've got that to play with. Um, and the four scenes that she in have really no massive consequences to the end result of what happens with these two girls. Uh, the two actresses in this film, Lydia Gillette and Olivia O'Neill, are they the two young girls, are probably the standouts. Their performances, outside of everything else, is really, really, really good. Like, they're great. But just some very odd um, choices in editing towards the back end of the film and again this film kind of I think misses the point about what made the original Exorcist so good and this one plays in a really interesting space with religious undertones and, and context it I it doesn't, it, it sort of shifts from very much, you know, wanting to be involved with the church to then not, to then yes. And it's just very odd. You know, like, I feel like religion is kind of just there as a thing and not overly expressed in this film, even though you do have the body of the blood scene and so on and so forth. So it's, it's, it's a very weird film. The one thing I suppose about this film, outside of everything else, is that it's not scary. That's kind of the thing for me that I felt throughout this entire movie, is that I wasn't scared. I actually got a bit bored, to be honest with you. So outside of the great performances, outside of some of the sloppy scripting, outside of the some of the bad performances as well, and the unnecessary performances, I would say the biggest failure of this film is it's not scary. The scariest part is that there's more coming because um, Blumhouse made the biggest investment they've made in a very long time by spending $400 million on the distribution rights only from Warner Brothers uh, and shared that with Universal Pictures. So, wow. So they have to make more money to at least make their money back. Even this film is still getting bums on seats. It's going to take a lot of bums and a lot of seats to make that money back. So, good luck. Jeez. Craziness. I don't know where all this money's coming from. Anyway, The Exorcist Believer, I would probably go as far as to give 5 out of 10. Yeah, I just needed a better script and a better time out where I got more scared. Okay. Believer! I nearly did it. Okay, good night, everyone.